can't beat the old jig and wrap, man. I'll tell you what. Oh, no matter where you go in Canada, one of the baits you always want to have with you is a jig and wrap, especially when you're fishing walleyes. And there's a nice one right there. That is a really good way. A really good way to start right there. That's what we want. Hey, this week we are going to have a lot of fun. We're up at Q Lake Lodge, southeastern Manitoba. Never been here before. This place is absolutely loaded with big walleyes and smallmouth bass, and we're going to show it to you. Glad you're here. Welcome to the show. All right, there you go. Beautiful. First fish of the trip, just to start, one thing to tell you, whenever you come up to Manitoba, now I'm using a jig and wrap, that's just one of those lures you take with you every time you come to Canada, but here it's barbless. So make sure that every lure that you put on, you have to crimp down those barbs. They don't have to be crimped down when you're in your tackle box, but if they're on your rod and reel, crimp those barbs down. Now, you may think, hey, I'm gonna lose a lot of fish. In most cases, when you keep a tight line and play the fish that way, you're gonna get most of those fish in. But just remember, you always pay attention to the rules and regulations no matter where you go. And when you're in Manitoba, it's barbless. Old jig and wrap, baby. <laughs> Pulling good. Oh, walleyes hit that jig and wrap so hard. Always just a great lure to bring to Canada with you. Yeah, there he is, I see him down there. I see him down there. Yeah, come here, you. Get over here. And there you go. Oh, yeah. One thing you're always going to want to remember, have a net with you because just the way as heavy as that bait is, it can be really, it can be easy for those fish to throw it. So just make sure you have a net. You'll just land a lot more fish that way. And it's also a little bit better on the fish. And when you clamp those barbs down, it comes right out of the net. Another nice walleye. Get some more. Good job, man. Let me get the net for you. He's not a big guy. Okay. But it could be lunch. I think it could be lunch. Hey, lunch is important to me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lunch. There's another one for lunch. Okay. I'll even get the live well for you if we can here. There you go. Yeah, perfect lunch fish. Here, take a pass. There you go. Got him. <laughs> See ya. Thanks, buddy. There he is. Come here, you. Yeah. You were hooked good enough. Usually I'll use the net, but he was... He had a nice single hook on there. And he was hooked good. There you go. Perfect. Yeah, I'm going to keep a couple of these. Guys got to eat. We're going to take a couple of these for shore lunch. That's a better one on the hair jig there. Yeah, on that hair jig again. There he comes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not monsters on the hair jig, but they are. Can we keep that size for lunch or is that? Oh, beautiful lunch fish. All right. Yeah. Add another one to the lunch fish. There you go. Throw that in the live well here. We're gonna do, we're just gonna clean a couple of these for, uh, for lunch later or later in the day. You know, even when, just, just, just like when we're bass fishing, walleye fishing, sometimes it helps to keep a rotation of lures. And as successful as that jig and wrap has always been for us, sometimes when fish are out, off that, I think guys make a mistake from time to time as they try to force feed them a lure that they're not doing. So after you've been sitting on an area for a while and you're seeing fish down there, you're getting bites, sometimes it just takes a change it up, maybe a slower fall, maybe a little bit heavier one. Do something different. Just because you're catching fish and lure one part of the day doesn't mean that's going to last the whole day. When things slow down, that's your opportunity to change and see if something else works. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're talking about. Come here. In the box you go. Thank you. Look at that spit. That's the size of the minute. I'm going to show you guys something here. Let me throw this. Let me throw this in a box. I want to show you why the jig and wrap is one of the things that are successful today. Look what he threw up. And you look not too far off the same size that's exactly what they're eating and i'm gonna tell you a little secret about the jig and wrap if you haven't thrown it before 
one of the things I can tell you is that color really doesn't matter. It's the action of the bait. However, when you find a color that you already have confidence in, that's how you're going to be more successful with the jig and wrap. But the more you use it, the more you will see, okay, if the Fire Tiger 1 comes off, I'll put another one on. It is the action of the lure. But to get started with it, just pick a confidence color and get after them. Perfect. Front's blowing in and we just got another double header. That's cool. There you go. Look at that. You get a weather change like that and they just load it up. Just load it up. There you go. Another eater. Boom. All right. <laughs> oh, you got it. That's a nicer one there for sure. Beautiful. Nice. Nice little. Uh... Yeah, perfect. There you go. Yep. In the box, buddy. In the box. We'll put her in the Okay, I got it. That's enough for our fish fry. Yeah. He hit that thing. He really rocked that thing good. He really rocked that thing. Yeah, that's a nice walleye there. Another nice one there. Man, when they hit that jig and wrap, man, here he comes. They hit that jig and wrap. They hit it hard. Thank you. There's a nice one there. That's why I always said you got it. It's really good to always have a net because just uh, because they're barbless, you just put a little slack in there and they're going to come off. But that's just another just another good representation of Q Lake walleyes and uh, absolutely beautiful and so fun. Right now, we're anywhere from 27 to 30 foot of water and that jig and wrap. And we've said it a bunch of times, but it is just a deadly tool. Please don't come to Canada without them. There you go. Get the net back there for you. Make it nice and easy. There you, there you go. go. Perfect. Another nice walleye, dude. Yep. For nothing. Sure. I got to do something when I'm here, so I got a beautiful walleye there. Yeah, easy, you know, just a just absolutely beautiful fish there, but just stuff like a jig and twister tail, sometimes use a jig and minnow, that jig and wrap, easy things. We're finding good schools of fish right now in 25 to 30 foot of water. Um, this is this is late summer getting into fall so when these fish group up like this and you can get around them <laughs> as you can see it's a lot of fun that was a first cast first cast with that maverick my goodness yeah come here you come here <laughs> man he whacked that thing hard too man he whacked that thing hard come here Nice smallie there. Sure. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Oh, there you go. Man, look at that nice smallmouth out there. One great thing about Q Lake, I love this. This is the farthest, and this is the first smallmouth that I've caught this far north. That is one beautiful fish. Look at that smallmouth right there. This is the farthest north that I've ever caught smallmouth and probably near the end of their range. And it's, it's typical stuff up here on Canadian lakes like this. You have rocky points. Right now the walleyes are still a little bit deeper. We had them between 25 and 30 foot. The smallmouth are up on these rocky points. So we're just trying different things. Jerk baits, it's a typical thing. You're gonna wanna bring to Canada one you hear. This is later in the summer where these fish are gonna stack up on walleyes. Sometimes they're gonna be be, or a majority of time are going to be under reefs and the smallmouth are going to be a lot of times on these rocky points or areas like that on average somewhere between six to twelve foot of water we're going to do our best to put everything together for you today and show you like we always tell you it's always one piece of the puzzle at a time and as of right now we're still figuring it out but we're getting there hard to beat a jerk bait man it just really is <laughs> uh, come on man there we go these windy points like this can just, fish can stack up on these good. And uh, throwing a jerk bait up there is always a good choice. <laughs> Nothing more fun for me. I just, I just love these. I just love these. There we go. Whoa, buddy. They are so strong. Oh yeah, nice fish. Yeah. Another nice smallmouth. Look at that right there. Come, oh, he looked a little too chunky to haul in. <laughs> My goodness, I love how fat these fish are. This is awesome. What a beautiful smallmouth. Right? Well, that was good. That's what makes it nice about barbless. Look at that. Look at this thing. 
I got a couple buddies back home that are just like that. Holy cow, nice big belly. Oh, I just love that. See ya. Oh man, that's that's probably a smallie. Oh, man, did he hit that thing hard. Man, did he hit that thing hard. Holy cow. My goodness, he's just not moving. Goodness gracious, that was a hard hit. You know, in this wind like this, and I, uh, he hit it so hard, about ripped the rod out of my hand. Come on, you. Can't tell if it's a smallie or pike yet. All I know is it's a, he hit it hard. A big smallie. Yeah, big smallie. Come here. Big smallie there. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, good one there. The yeah, if you would. Yeah, there we go. Just don't don't swipe at him yet. Let me just get him up here. He's gonna. He ain't done yet. Tell me when. Yeah, just wait. Not yet. Bass. Not yet. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Try to get him now. There you go. That's what we want. Look at that. What a beautiful smallmouth that is. Buddy, that could be that master angler. Huh? That is a big fish right there. To be a master angler here, it's got to be 18 inches, and this may not be 18, but it is close. That is one beautiful fish. And just so you guys know, that's going to be close, but it's probably not quite master angler, but it's a big fish. That's all good. If you notice, just kept catching on that. Those are barbless hooks, and that beautiful fish right there stayed hooked the entire time. Absolutely Fantastic. Q Lake Lodge, an awesome, awesome multi-species fishery. Whoa, buddy. Oh. oh, man. Yeah, nice one. Oh, nice one. Real nice one. Look at this thing here. Yeah, buddy. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, I got it. I got that. Yeah, look at that. Holy cow. That's one of those ones you want. Look at that beautiful walleye right there. <laughs> what a beautiful fish right there. I don't know how many we've caught today. I really have no idea. We took a little bit of break just to go catch some smallmouth, which is a blast. But when the walleyes are hitting like this, Q Lake Lodge is definitely one place you really want to come, especially if you want big walleyes. They got them. Perfect. All right, I'm going to show you how I'm working this jig and wrap. So right now, I'm going to let this go all the way down to the bottom. And obviously, you're going to know when it goes down to the bottom when your spool stops. So there he is. I'm on the bottom. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jig up. I'm going to let it go back down to the bottom. And what I'm doing is I'm watching the slack. If it doesn't hit bottom, then I know we're in a little bit deeper water. I'm going to let some more line out. I want to get that to the bottom. Then the idea is just lifting it and letting it fall. This is totally a reaction bite. You're causing them to commit. And the best way to do that is just by jerking this up. When we're vertical jigging like this, the best way to do it is jerk it up and let it fall. Most of the time when you get a strike on it, when you go to jerk up again, the fish has already hit it on the fall and you set the hook. That's as simple and it's easy how to work the jigging wrap when you're vertical jigging. Yeah, and that would be good, I think, on this one. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a real good one. Another nice one. Jeez, other nice one. This is crazy, man. This is crazy fun. Look how he ate that jig and wrap. He smoked it. I've had a couple of the last ones that they were heavy and just came off. But uh, that's another nice one. Look how he ate that jig and wrap, man. That is so cool. One of the, if not the best reaction bait on the planet. Hey, I'm going to I'm gonna get this thing out of here. We'll be back right after this. This segment of Jim Crowley Outdoors is brought to you by Precision Sonar. For all your sonar needs, custom mounts, and trusted brands, including the Leash, Graph Glass, Ninja Grass Blade, and more, PrecisionSonar.com. So the reel that I chose for this is Cast King's new Royal Legend. It only weighs 5.5 ounces. It has an 8 to 1 gear ratio, and it has 11 plus 1 ball bearings. This is an exceptionally light reel, very powerful, and with that quick retrieve, fantastic for a jig and wrap. Because on a jig and wrap, a lot of times they're going to hit it on the fall. When I'm watching that line go down, if I see that slack pile up on the water, I can take up line real quick with that 8 to 1 and set the hook. I'm using 14-pound suffix monofilament to a 12-pound suffix 
base monofilament leader. And how I do that is I put a little black swivel about 18 inches up from the lure. I want that to keep from getting twist in my line. When you're throwing a jig and wrap, put that little swivel on there. It's going to save you a lot of time, a lot of aggravation, and the lure is going to fall a lot more naturally. Now the rod on here, this one, I like I like this for a couple different things, but for a jig and wrap, the reason I'm using it, this is a Bushido blank from American Tackle. This is an MB6810-17. It's basically a medium heavy with a fast tip. I also use this for throwing top waters. I also use it for throwing spinner baits, but when I'm vertical jigging, a jig and wrap, this is a perfect length. So that's that set. When it comes to fishing smallmouth in Canada or just about anywhere for that matter, I don't go smallmouth fishing without jerk baits. And this is Rapala's new Maverick 110. What makes this different? This bait not only suspends, it has the ability to turn 180. So when you throw slack back to the lure, that bait has a, turn, has a tendency not only to go one way or the other, but can turn back around. When you're throwing a jerk bait, instead of just a jerk, jerk pause, when I'm throwing a jerk bait, if you want more strikes, jerk, jerk, throw that rod tip back. Jerk, jerk, throw that rod tip back. When you do that, you throw slack back to the lure, it goes off in its intended path. No question, you're going to get more strikes. Just a simple perch color that always works when we're up here. The setup that I have it on is actually my signature series uh, jerkbait rod from Mudhole. This is built on an American Tackle Bushido Blank. It's an MB 10 to 17, which is a 6.8 uh, rod. It's perfect for jerkbaits. I also use it for wacky worming as well. The reel on here, the reel that I only use for jerkbaits when it comes to throwing them on a spinning rod, and that is Cast King Speed Demon Elite 7. 4 to 1 gear ratio. One of the fastest, if not the fastest, spinning reel on the market takes up that line with an absolutely incredible drag system. You're going to need it for these smallies up here because they are strong. The spinning reel is set up as standard for me. 10 pound suffix 832, which is a sinking braid, then to 12 pound suffix fluorocarbon leader. I went with 12 pound here because the water is just a little bit more stained. I can get away with it. Plus, we have a lot more pike in this water here, so I've got a better chance of getting my jerkbait back. This setup for me for jerkbaits, Flat out, it works. Jerry, you and I have been fishing together for a lot of years, well, probably close to 20 with Dunlops, but this is your oh, newest, yes. yeah, this is your newest lodge here at Q Lake. It's completely different. Tell us about it. Well, Q Lake Lodge is, uh, it's in southern Manitoba and uh, approximately three hour drive northeast of Winnipeg, four hours from the United States, uh, Canada border. And uh, it's a beautiful lake. It's, uh, you can see in the background, this is Quinnell Lake. We have access to Manigatogan and Happy Lake. So there's a three lake system all on the, uh, Manitoggin River here. Um, the camp itself, it's its a do-it-yourself type package mm -hmm. where you can rent the cabin, you can rent the boat, or you can bring your own boat. It's a drive-in camp, so we have a lot of flexibility out there. Yeah, and one of the things I noticed too, is especially here, this is a very fam family-friendly resort. Just a lot of kids running around here. You have families coming here every year and they can rent the cabins here. This is a really nice getaway because it, there's a little bit of everything to get the kids in the outdoors here, isn't oh, it? Oh, for sure. I mean, we got uh, one of the biggest things, the river right here at the camp, it's nice and calm. There's always kids in canoes and we got kayaks for them. There's no charge for that. You rent in the cabin, the kayak, canoes are included, the kids go and play and have fun. Oh, they were running around here last night like crazy. There's also a beach over here. Yeah. So especially when you come in, in the summertime, you're gonna have access to that beach. There's beautiful water here behind us. There's just so much to do. And like Jerry said, there. this is completely like a do-it-yourself thing. So you can bring food for the kids, you can bring whatever you want, but you have the comfort right here. It's just, it was really great sitting out last night with people uh, around the fire and talking to them. And you guys have horseshoes here. You have, you've just got a bunch of things for the kids to do as well, don't you? Yeah, it's uh, and it's all on your own schedule. You want to get up early and go fishing, it's a great fishery. You want to sleep in and have a late breakfast, you can do that too. If these it's kids all can on your own. these kids can come here and catch walleyes, they can catch smallmouth, they can catch northern pike. You can make memories with your kids that'll last a lifetime. If you want to find out more, it's an easy thing to do. Simply go to QLakeLodge.com. Yeah. This one's staying down. Uh, yeah it is. Good Yeah it is. Yeah. I got it right here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Yeah, buddy, look at that one. Oh, that's what we come to Q Lake for. 
What a beautiful walleye that is right there. That is awesome. That is so much fun on that jig and wrap. I am telling you, I'm not the world's best walleye fisherman by far. You get around those walleyes with that jig and wrap, and even when they're not hitting other stuff, the reaction that they go against that jig and wrap, falling in different ways, that will make you a better walleye fisherman than you are. When you are walleye fishing, there's one bait you just don't go fishing without. That is the jig and wrap. Just he hammered that thing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Ooh, nice big there. Yeah. Ooh, I'm careful That's how I beauty. bring him back over here to you. Oh. Get him up here to you. Oh yeah, buddy. There we go. That's a beautiful walk. That's the one we wanted. All right. Oh. <laughs> that. That is one nice fish right there. Look at that beautiful fish. I don't know how many we caught today, but we had an absolute blast. I want to thank my buddy, Jerry Dunlop. You want to come to an awesome multi-species lake that specializes in big walleyes and big smallmouth, go to QLakeLodge.com. You'll find all the information there. Hook up with the best place in Manitoba that we come to. Until next time, thank you so much for joining us. For Jerry Dunlop, I'm Jim Crowley. God bless you. We'll see you soon. We sure appreciate you joining us today, and if you enjoyed what you watched, please check us out on social media, including Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. God bless us with a fantastic day today, and I hope he does exactly the same for you on your next fishing trip. See you soon.